rabbit farming compared to chicken farming? Did, you, did, you, did I hear myself right? Can rabbit farming compete with chicken farming? Well, the enthusiastic ones will say, yes, we can. <laughs> but let's be realistic. It will take us so long. I don't even want to put a number on it. But somebody will say, how? But why? Like the kids who say, but daddy, why? Why? Because chicken is an established meat. I don't know whether people hate fowls <laughs> or not. Um, but yes, it's all right to compare ourselves with the enthusiastic ones that like see a future there for rabbit farming and see that we can make some money out of rabbit farming. So the question is, how are we going to approach this? Well, <clears throat> doctors have admitted that rabbit meat is more has got more nutrients and is more beneficial to us human than chicken. Rabbit meat is lean meat, it's got less fat, it's got high protein, it's got so many other nutrients that chicken don't have. So the question is why why don't people just get into rabbit farming as you know as um um, as people get into chicken farming. The reason is rabbits are considered very cute and in the West, um, even though that is not the whole truth, most rabbit farms uh, or most rabbits are considered beautiful, cute pets. We're changing the narrative. How are we going about it? There is an influx of so many young people and even some serious business people venturing into rabbit farming and rightly so you know it's booming and the um the interest is there but are we starting it right <clears throat> are we doing it because we think rabbits are cool or are we doing it because we see a future farming business business using the word business because you want when you want when you make it when you're doing business you want to make money right you want to get an interest out of your investment therefore how are we going to approach this all right it sounds very scary I'm, no, I'm, i don't mean to scare you at all because i jumped into it just like probably you have but I've experienced a few things that I'd like to share with you. If you've listened to my previous video, thank you very much for listening. If you have subscribed to my channel, I really, really appreciate that. And if you haven't, I am appealing to you to do so because we bring in you some serious facts, truth, and some farm secrets. Can you imagine? People don't share it. Because they are scared that they're going to be bypassed. No, we're not. Because I believe that the way rabbit farming is going is going to get bigger and bigger. And people will be aware. People will switch quickly from chicken to rabbit. If we have enough meat to supply, we don't. So, so I'm not afraid if I have someone come to... So long as it's not the Chinese coming to kill the market, as they always do, and it's local Ghanaians investing, or Africans to say that, to, to, to broaden it, investing into our African business, I don't have any problem with that. So here are the facts. When you're farming rabbit, it's got nothing to do with how cute the rabbit is. Unless you have a department, and uh, listen to what I'm saying carefully, if you have a department where you deal with pet rabbits, then you can have varieties, 
but that should not overshadow your farm. Your main focus of your farm should be meat production. So that narrows it down to you getting meat rabbit. Rabbit that can give you the highest weight in the shortest possible time. Averagely measured, you should be able to get a rabbit or rabbit should be able to achieve between 2 and 2.5 kilograms within a period of between 10 to 12 weeks. That's what happens in Europe. Yes, it could be their feeding method. So if you give a take between 10 and let's say 15, 16 weeks, your rabbit should be ready and you should be rotating your stock in that manner. So it boils down to what breed are you starting your farming with? Look, I'm not going to sit here and start comparing. The statistics are there. You can check it. The statistics are there. The problem with us in Africa or Ghana in particular is we don't even know what breeds we've got. All we see is the color. All we see is the color. So you look at this gray and white rabbit sitting there and um, somebody will tell me or I will tell you it's, uh, it looks like a Dutch. <laughs> it looks like. So we don't even know what we've got. We don't know um we don't know uh, whether what we've got is really a dutch or is a mixture of a dutch and something we we've lost the genetics genetics of our rabbits our local rabbit and therefore it's about time for us to take a sit back and start looking for some pure breeds in order to enrich our uh, our genetics so that we can be we will be able to achieve the proper slaughter age in the shortest possible way and this is where the investment coming because the pure breeds are not cheap i know a breeder only one breeder who's brought some pure breeds from abroad and he's doing very well because he's, he's done very well i have to commend him because um, he is slowly, slowly spreading the love. And I managed to get my hand on about six of them, which broke our bank a little bit. But it is definitely worth it. So what I will say to you is the pure breeds are spreading slowly. Please, 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 if you're doing rabbit farming, if you want to do rabbit farming, then what I would say is get your hands on one or two of the pure breeds and slowly, 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 slowly enrich your farm with either mixed breeds or pure breeds. Because that's the only way you can start doing farming. The genes of the pure breeds is um, so powerful that they get bigger quicker and this is very very true you get a pure breed and within eight between 10 and and, and 16 weeks they are they are hitting closer to two kilograms if not even more than two kilograms and you have yourself a local breed and it will be six months and it will still be probably 1.5 kilograms so you can't do business like this i'm sorry my friend you can't do business like this. You need a pure breed in your farm. I'm going to be hitting on this breed, breed, breed business because that's the only thing that's the only thing that will make your farm become a farm. If you can you imagine if you have staff and you have to pay them and you're not able to sell enough in order for you to just about break even break even meaning you pay your staff you pay for your feed and you don't make profit and you say you're farming 
You know, you can't do any business without making profit because you will have times when nothing is coming. So you need to make profit, bank the profit so that you'll be using that money to either reinvest into the business or, you know, um, you know, you need to reap the benefit of your labor. So watch me bring you some more noise about you getting into the pure breeds. We are at the moment not selling the pure breeds, but I, I'm sure within the next six months, we will get the pure breeds ready and we'll be able to sell some to other farmers. It's not about hoarding, it's about preserving and reproducing and sustaining the pure breeds. You know, we had to join the queue for or four months before we were able to get our hands on the pure breeds you know and even that we didn't get all in the same time we get them in drones so in in in, in essence we got a pure breed when um uh, uh when when the door was crossed so uh just i just want you to know that it's not easy to get your hands on but don't quote me on it we are in a program where hopefully in the next six months we'll be able to sell some pure breeds and we will come out and let you know when we do thank you very much for watching rabito famino this is a little bit longer but is is needed for us to move on from where we are to the next stage rabito famino Thank you very much for listening to us and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.